If you live in darkness, without the light of faith, the light of faith helps us to see clearly and helps us, here's the kicker, not to be afraid. Welcome to the Father Leo Show, where I'm dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. And in this episode, we are going to discuss, is it okay for a Catholic to celebrate Halloween? So we're going to jump right into that. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. You have no idea how just those little basic interactions, pushing a button or writing a comment, how that it helps to overcome all the suppressions from the internet algorithms. And let's admit, there's a lot of people out there in the internet world that won't have a chance to see this because the algorithms are kind of keeping our good news to ourselves. So make sure you like, subscribe, share, and comment. And if possible, please go to our patreon.com slash the Father Leo Show. Subscribe at any level and you'll get access to the commentary, which is going to be what then should a Catholic do, especially if you have children and how to celebrate Halloween without having to dress your kids up like a shepherd or a saint every year. So we're going to figure that out for those who are supporters to our Patreon community or just members of our Patreon community. So let's just jump right into it with our discussion about faith and Halloween. Clearly, a lot of people are going to accuse the Catholic Church of either being fuddy-duddies, stuck in the mud, and don't want our kids to celebrate this feast day, or you're going to have very intense Christians who are going to say that any semblance of celebrating this holiday is going to be uh, a pagan ritual. So let's actually talk about Halloween because it is more of a cultural phenomenon uh, with Catholic roots. Now we all know that that Halloween was a pre-Celtic Christian celebration. So before Jesus, people use this time of the year in our current calendar. It's November, the excuse me, October the 31st. They use that as a way to celebrate their pre-Celtic Christian celebration of the new year. So a change from old to new. And for Christians, we took that as our cue to say yes, from old to new, from sinful and dead to alive in Christ, i.e. the eve of the all-holy feast. And that would be the 31st, because guess what happens on November the 1st? We celebrate All Saints Day. This is obviously key, because even when you take a look at the Old English, they would call it All Hallows Eve or All Hallows Evening. You cut that short, evening is Een, Hallow, Een. You see, it is truly a holy feast day. And a lot of people don't like the fact that people dress in like the dead and <clears throat> the darkness and, and all the, the, the doom and the gloom, so to speak. But that's also a spillover from kind of that tradition of taking the pre-Celtic Christian traditions and making it Christian. Again, in order for there to be a change for, say, a new year. It's the same thing in America or anywhere that people celebrate the new year. They go from old to new. And in a spiritual way, because the days are getting darker, we know that people have kind of associated old to new to dying to a new living. <clears throat> and that's why you're going to see some of the vestiges of the skulls and, and kind of like that darker approach to life with the goblins, ghouls, and witches, because they're leaving that in order to live something new. Now, do I like it? <clears throat> That's another story. That's going to be in our commentary. But what I want to do is just encourage you with a simple answer that can you celebrate Halloween as a Catholic? The answer is yes and no. Yes, in the sense that it is a major feast day. November the 1st, a humongous feast day. And on the evening before, All Hallows' Eve, the, the eve before the All Holy Ones, i.e. Halloween, you've got to celebrate it. But how? And that's where we're going to jump into the distinctions of 
how the world celebrates Halloween and how the church understands Halloween as we jump into a discussion about culture. Let's just say culture is a product of humanity and humanity is broken. And so if you're upset with me that I'm encouraging people to celebrate Halloween, blame the culture. Because at one point, the culture of Halloween was truly, truly magnificent and beautiful. People would come to church. They would light candles. They would go to the graves of people who have died, and they would make prayers there in remembrance of the fallen, of the dead. And it just hearkens to revelation accounts of what we even see in the prophet Ezekiel, where the dry bones, these are bones that are coming out of the grave. If you even take a look, for example, at the Signorelli Chapel in that magnificent Duomo, the Cathedral of Orvieto, there's a little private chapel there, and you're going to see some pretty intense things. You're going to see skeletons coming out of the ground because that's where they were buried six feet under unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies and if you read the prophetic books you'll hear how there will be a rattling sound of the bones shaking but then a ruha a breath the spirit will be breathed onto them and they will start to grow flesh and they will become new again and these things are in a sense frightening i mean honest to gosh I'm not quite sure why uh, cemeteries are frightening. They're actually very beautiful places, you know, well manicured, and it's almost very serene. It's like a park. But as soon as it gets dark, I don't know, it gets kind of frightening. We've seen a lot of instances of people who work the graveyard shift at a cemetery, and they experience some crazy supernatural stuff. And I can understand why it gets scary. Why is it scary? Well, because we're touching on to an unknown, the spirit world, which is only familiar to a degree, but it is very much unknown. And so what is unknown is always frightening. Also, the reality that spirits can be good, but they can also be bad. And we know that evil spirits like demonic possessions, obsessions, these things are sadly real. And that is scary. Why is it scary? I think it's because if something takes over our spirit that doesn't belong in us, it touches a core that really no one has permission to touch except for myself. I mean, even God wants to respect my decisions. Doesn't probably approve and like it. They're probably immoral decisions. But it's almost like if something invades you, like a spirit that possesses you, then it can actually be frightening. And so I think these normal, rational fears of the unknown, of the spirit world, of the dead, of things that usually go bump in the night, these are, these are frightening at our core. And, and this is almost a good thing because it shows that we are not called to live in darkness. We're called to live in the light. But what does the world do? They take it and they actually commercialize it. And why? Let's admit that bad news travels faster than good news. Horror films are more blockbustered in Hollywood cinemas, action-packed, even frightening films, than, say, like, a love story. Unless you like love stories. But a lot of people know that there is, a, a, like, an endorphin, like a, a, a real high that you get when you're scared. That's why people who do crazy things like jump out of a plane with a parachute or, you know, what do they call it? Paragliding. Just, just with a, people like putting on suits that mimic wings and they jump off a building and those things are frightening. But what do they say? I feel like I've lived for the first time. Now, this is key because it's showing that Frightening experiences make us more awake. They, in, in fact, they kind of shake us to our core. It makes us grateful that we are alive, safe, and secure. It actually even scares the hell out of us. And it could even scare the heaven 
into us. And so there is a real psychological propensity to dabble in the darkness. What's sad, however, is that for a lot of people, especially those who want to associate themselves to pagan ritual and pagan religions, is that they've kind of resurged their pagan traditions without taking into account what Christ did. And that's the big issue. People who celebrate Halloween in a dark way are afraid of what Jesus did at the tomb. Jesus conquered death. And for that reason, there is no need to be afraid of all of those things that deal with the spiritual world because Jesus conquered it. And so I think that Halloween is just one of those times when people who want to reject Jesus is because Jesus is going to bring light to the grave. And so this gives them a chance this one time a year to kind of, I don't know, dabble in the darkness because that's what they prefer. The challenging part is if you live in darkness without the light of faith, because there's a difference, even if people are living in dark times. I think we're living in dark times. But the light of faith helps us to see clearly and helps us, here's the kicker, not to be afraid. And what these evil gobliny things want is to make us afraid. And the more we focus on these things, the more it stays in our minds and the more we become fearful. And what does Christ say more than any other phrase? Be not afraid. So hopefully this kind of cultural exposition shows that, yeah, we are a messed up world. There is a desire to dabble into the occult and the diabolical because we are so broken and we almost feel like if we do that, that'll at least give us something interesting. You know, like, again, why do people buy Ouija boards? Or I remember at one point when we were kids, it was like, Black Aggie, Black Aggie, and you'd rub your face and close your eyes in the dark, and then you'd wake up and you'd see yourself in the mirror, and it's only because your eyes were not adjusting, and there'd be this gruesome figure in the mirror. That was you. I mean, but we did it as kids. Why? Because it woke us up. It was kind of fun. It was exciting. And we all want to kind of live. And let's also admit that living in the light all the time, that's not easy. People want to kind of enter into the darkness. And so the cultural exposition shows that people are attracted to the occult because it is interesting and it wakes people up. And when you are afraid, chemicals in your brain start going and you, I don't know, feel more alive. And that's why Christ is key to healing the culture of Halloween because Christ confronts those evils in the graveyard with Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, wife of Clopas, bringing those spice nards, those oils to anoint the body, the dead, gruesome body of Jesus. But they weren't afraid. Why? Because they were there with an expectation to see Jesus. And that's what people who celebrate Halloween in a worldly way are most afraid of. They are afraid to see and encounter Jesus. So, in a way, this is a simple answer. Uh, a lot of people ask this question year after year after year. Yes, you can celebrate Halloween as long as we go back to the roots. Yeah, granted, it was a Druid pre-Christian celebration. But as St. Paul Christianized that which was pagan, because these people didn't know any better, and it was his way, St. Paul's way of evangelizing, catechizing. I mean, can you imagine if you walked into like a non-Christian's home and just started throwing out everything out and be like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and you're going to go to hell if you keep this in your home. Those people are going to reject you and your message. What St. Paul did at the Areopagus, you can find this in Acts of the Apostles, where he preached to all these people who had a bunch of pagan gods, saw that there was an altar dedicated to the unknown God. And he said, I want to tell you about this unknown God. He has revealed himself. His name is Jesus Christ. And only a couple people actually listened to him. But what St. Paul did was he baptized that which was not Christian. 
pagan. Therefore, bad. To us, to them, it was normal. It was just normal. So he took what was normal for them and baptized it. And when I say baptized, it means immersion in a type of a drowning. He killed the parts that weren't good. And what comes out of it? New life. What's more frightening than dying by drowning? Fire? Yeah. I mean, because all of those things, you feel it for a while. And it's all there to literally kill what cannot live forever. And so when we take a look at Halloween, all we have to do is realize that, yeah, it is possible to celebrate it. As long as we take those elements of its origins, baptize it, and bring it to new life in Christ. And so what I want to do is just leave you with that thought, but I do have more information. I'm going to give some advice, actually, especially for parents who have young children who want to dress up and get candy. So I'm going to offer some pastoral advice. This is going to be exclusively for anyone who is on Patreon as a member at any level. Remember, you can be a Patreon member at any level. And so you can get access to my pastoral comments, my carryout orders, my takeaways, which I'm going to be doing next. But I do want to, first of all, say thank you to some really important people who have helped us out as executive producers for our show, and we certainly could use more. We've got the Lozinskis, Frasers, Africano, Chandlers, Robles, Pikulski, and the Roonies. They have been fantastic in supporting us as executive producers, and please consider going to patreon.com slash the father leo show in order to get access to my commentary which will soon follow but also you get some great access to good information pastoral information as well as some perks so make sure you like subscribe share and comment god bless you happy halloween and stay hungry for god